Hi, welcome to uh, College Cambria. Hello, Croatia, uh, College Cambria. My name is Gary Abner. I am uh, the uh, public services, one of the public services lecturers. Um, just a quick um, word before we start, I'd like to uh, let, let you just watch a quick video and then we'll come back and continue with the presentation and we'll have questions after that. So, just a short. We are Cambria. We were rated excellent by Eston inspectors. We inspire success. We provide learners with work experience, which enables them to have the very best employment opportunities. We are the highest performing college in Wales. We lead the way with our world-class facilities. We partner with top universities to bring degrees to your doorstep. We have raised over £500,000 for charity since 2013. We impact positively on the wider communities we serve. We change thousands of lives every year. We can change yours. Your success starts here. OK, and we're back. Um, basically, what I want to do now is, um, as you've seen, we've got a prestigious college. We've got quite a bit of a history of uh, doing really well. So you do yourself well to actually come to the college. Um, on the public services side of things, we have a new sort of development this year where the level threes are going on to a new um, uh, curriculum called Uni U Uniform Protective Services Foundation instead of the um, old style um, uniform public services. Very much a similar thing, except it's less units to do in the first year with two exams included. But I'll talk you through each one. So first, I'd like to go on to the level twos and I'll talk you through each of the levels to let you know where you have to be at to um, basically enroll on it, all of them. Notwithstanding the level ones, which are basically moved over with sport now and it's a different curriculum altogether. The level twos, OK, we took, we're looking at GCSEs A to D here and you need four. Uh, OK, and um, if you've not got English or maths, this is your opportunity for a second chance at um, doing a GCSE in English and maths at C grade. OK, because if you want to go into a level three course, you must have achieved five A to C grade GCSEs, which include maths and English language, not literature. OK, so if you haven't got those, then you need to go to a level two course uh, and work for an extra year, basically, to redo your GCSEs and have another chance to improve your um, your skills level, basically. OK, so that's the minimum requirement is four A to D grades using uh, including English and maths. OK, and like I said, it's an opportunity for you to redo or improve your GCSEs in your maths. It's a government directive that we have to improve that. And you're not allowed onto a level three course without having that kind of qualification. OK, you must have English and maths at level two or above is what they're talking about. So that's a C grade. OK, A to C. Now, part of the course, it's called a uniform public services course, which means that you wear a uniform. Not rocket science. OK, that you find that all the staff wear uniforms as well. And we've done this basically so that it, 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 it implants on you the idea that it's a public service with a uniform requirement. OK, and it also starts to instill a sense of discipline in that you must have a tidy uniform and must wear it all the time. So you can wear it with pride as well. If you're going into a public service enrolled, then basically we're looking to you to be proud of the fact that you're on a public services course and that you're going into a public service, which requires you to be customer facing. OK, so if you're not the type of person who likes to go customer facing, there are certain roles in public services that you could go into, but majority of the time I'd, I'd advise that you move into another type of discipline where you're not required to be friendly and face, uh, you know, smiling at people, okay? So that's what we're looking at, right? The course itself, the level two course, consists of eight units, two of which are exam units. Now, most of the course is based on employ employment and employability and also a slight introduction to criminology. OK, and basically what it is, is because of the fact that you're still on an academic um, um, uh, area, basically, for level two, what we want to do is to make sure that you're academically qualified. So that's the important bit. Get your GCSE sorted so that all your ducks in a row so you can go on to the level three course. That's your progression course. And we look into two years at that one. OK, 
Now, as part of the course, you also need to, um, it's a compulsory element that you must do the Duke of Edinburgh Award bronze. And those of you who got the bronze think you get away with it, we expect you to carry on to the silver. Okay, so it's an actual requirement that you sign on to the bronze. Now, signing on to any Duke of Edinburgh Award or any externally awarded certificate also involves a cost. And the cost at the moment is £22 registration. That's for the silver and the bronze. Those of you who got silver, you can enroll on gold. Okay, the gold is £28 at the moment, but it's looking to go up by £1, by the way. Okay, so that's the requirement. You must do the bronze as part of your um, your course, the level two course anyway. Okay, also as a, as a standard compulsory part of the course, you must go to Glantlin Residential Week. That means you go to Glantlin in Bala, Lake Bala, okay, or Clintegid as uh, it's in Welsh. What you need to do is you go there for a week, you go on the Monday and we stay there until Friday. And it's a residential, so you'll be there without being able to leave the camp for a whole week. Um, this cost is £122 at the moment. And, uh, sorry, £180 at the moment. It's £180. So if you are intending to sign on to the Level 2 course, you need to have, by the end of November, paid in through PayPal services, uh, or wise pay, you will have uh, paid up um, to go. If you don't go, then the chances of you actually completing the course are pretty difficult. For those of you who don't, are worried about finances, don't, because you can come to the course if it's a financial issue and you can prove that your income in your household is less than the, than, than the threshold, which is at the moment £22,800. If you can prove you're earning less than that, then you will be you'll be funded by the college. There is a fund which we can apply for. All you need to do is when you come to college, make sure that either myself or one of the other tutors are aware of your financial situation and we can then get you grant funded. You don't have to pay it back. It's paid for you. The same for your books. You need to you need to get one um, course book. The course book's £18 to £20. Um, that is funded for you as well. And any uniform requirement that you have, um, the uniform is £60 at the moment, £63 okay, from our supplier. We're expecting you within two weeks of starting course to have a uniform. That's across the board. It's not just for the level twos, it's for level threes. Everybody wears uniform. Those of you who are financially um, challenged, basically what we do is we can actually get that funded for you as well. So there's no excuse not for having a uniform, no excuse not for going to Glanthlin, and no excuse for um, not being able to fund yourself. Okay, so this is what we're looking at for the DOE as well. So you can actually come to college and if, you have a th if you're below the threshold, then you can apply for a grant and I'll process it for you. And before you know it, you're in uniform and you've got everything you required for the course. Um, those of you who are over the minimum threshold, I'm afraid you're going to be like me. We have to pay for it. OK, but bear in mind, your additional costs are going to be at least £22 for the Duke of Edinburgh, £60 for uniform, plus a little bit, maybe. And also your £180 for your um, gland thin. Um, when we look at it in the round, if you try and get five days on a caravan site, you're going to find you're spending much more than £180. You're probably going to spend that on one day. Also thrown into this uh, Glanthlin, uh, you get all the instruction, all the kit, all the safety equipment, all the wetsuits, everything else thrown in it, plus three meals a day. And in some cases, you'll, you'll find there's a little tea break as well in the afternoon. So all of your activities are covered, all of your food all of your safety equipment so that's going to be quite good okay so um, if you can find it cheaper anywhere else let me know because i'd like to reduce the cost of it but at the moment it stands at that cost okay part of my responsibilities i'm the um, public services lecturer but i'm also the coordinator for um, three of the sites for the duke of edinburgh award so you'll be, you'll be doing the duke of edinburgh in-house with either myself and those of you who choose to go to wrexham and um, will be with uh, alan lowry who's also sort of the He's, he's a, a, also a coordinator for the other three sites. So either way, you'll either talk to me or Alan Lowry for the Dick of Edinburgh Award site, and also both of us will attend Glanthlin. So you'll have familiar faces there from our staff, and we'll be, we'll be talking to the Glanthlin staff to make sure that we get some kind of coordinated effort and everybody enjoys themselves. Okay, so the D of E, those of you who don't know, it's a three-day event. OK, you have to do an overnight stop 
You have to do at least a nine mile walk and the following day, another nine mile walk. Bearing in mind that COVID has set some kind of limits on us at the moment, but we'll we'll make you very much aware of what's required. And if we can get away with not doing the walks, we will. But however, we'll probably do day walks instead. That's the way it's looking. But anyways, like I said, DOE, you have to do. Silvers, if you've got silver already, you will help with the training for the bronzes. Um, but that's part of the requirement, okay? Now, the course, like I said, is aimed at employment and employability. So level two, what you're looking at is what kind of employment is available in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Royal Marines, Police, Ambulance Service, Fire and Rescue Service, Coast Guard, uh, Border Patrol, whatever. We look at different employment schemes and basically where you think you can fit in amongst all of the jobs available. And you may not realize it, but there are actually something like eight different police forces that you can join. Not just police forces as in the civilian. There's the military police, there's ministry defense guards, there's aircraft police. Uh, there's all kinds. Even the military, tra the naval, the uh, uh, transport police for, for trains. So basically, we give you an insight as a general into all employment and employability situations within public services. So it wakes you up to the point of, well, hang on, what do I want to do? You may not be sure what you want to do. Most of you shouldn't be. It's, it's basically uh, rare at your ages to think, oh, I definitely want to be this. So it gives you a flavor, a look at it. Okay, so that's your level two course. Like I said, I'll get the questions afterwards. Moving on to the level three, renamed Uniform Protective Services this year. Okay, and it's a foundation degree. Now. It's a foundation course now. So it's a foundation diploma, diploma at level three in Uniform Protective Services. And basically... The important thing about this is that you must have five A to C grades, including English and maths, English language, that is, okay? If you don't have it, then you, unfortunately, you cannot progress onto level three and you must do level two, okay, so that you can have a chance at redoing your GCSEs. On rare occasions, we get somebody who has very good grades, like, per, let's say, seven GCSEs, but has only got a C or not a C, a D in English, we are likely to possibly move them on once we've had a good look at everybody else's skill level. So if we're slightly short um, on people in level three, we might, instead of pushing you to level two, allow you to go on to a GCSE retake class at level three. OK, but this is by agreement and it's by by us looking at what's your chances or likelihood of you succeeding um, and also at the same time putting the extra bit of effort in to get the GCSE um, C grade or above. If we don't think you can do that, unfortunately, we will move it down to level two. And if you haven't got four A to C grades, A to D grades, sorry, for level two, we will suggest that you move to a level one course, which means you'll have two more years at, at school or college. OK, so five GCSEs, including English and Maths. OK, and like I said, for the level twos, uniform is compulsory. It's not voluntary. I don't want to hear that. Oh, it's in the wash or the dog ate it or whatever. OK, you will be required to have at least two uniform tops, one hoodie or a jacket. OK, and you're expected to wear them every day. Now, as part of joining the college, you also be, you will be given an identity bracelet. You are all expected to wear your identity at all times on the transport and the college grounds and on visits. Anybody who shows up for an official visit without their identity will not be allowed to go. It's part of our security arrangements. It's not because we like to know who you are. We like to know that you belong. That's the reason that you're wearing this card. Everybody in civilian life is doing it now. So it's not as if you're going to stand out because most people, when you look around your banks, etc., they're wearing these, these identity bracelets as part of their own security. So accept it, work with us, with us on it, and we won't have an issue. Okay. Now, those of you who've already done your bronze and also silver, in the level three, we give you the opportunity to sign on and do it, uh, to do the silver and the, and the gold award. It's up to yourself. It's voluntary. OK, it's not compulsory. It's voluntary now. But most of the, the level threes, I would expect to go on to either silver or start working on the gold, which is a two year award. Uh, again, I'd coordinate it. I tell you what's required. You do it. Then when you've done it, you, you present the work to me. I either I assess it and say yes or no. You go away, redo it, or you move on to your next um, task. Okay, so that's uh, the requirement for their DOV silver or gold. I like you to do it. Everywhere that you go to get employment, 
after you leave college, including the universities, are looking at whether you have done the silver or the bronze or the gold award, and it counts towards their sifting, the paper sift that they carry out for giving places, awarding places to the course on the university. So it's worth doing. Also worth doing is we look at whether you can get any kind of experience in volunteering. The police love volunteers. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the uh, even the fire service love volunteers because of the fact that you're giving up your time, your free time, freely to help out your community. That's what we're looking at, okay? Because public services is about being involved with your own community and being uh, getting involved, getting to help people in the community, okay? So that's what we're looking at, is this willingness to become part of the community, to work with the community and to show your face, okay? Most public servants must have some kind of a... Uh, an impetus to start joining in and doing something, giving back to the community. So that's what we're looking at, okay? The um, Uniform Protective Services Level 3 course is six units, two of which are exams. So you have to do two exams, and you have four other units which you need to work on, okay? It's time throughout the year, and it's, it's doable. It's doable. It's a slightly higher rate of work than you're used to because of the fact you're now working in a college environment, which is a higher level of learning. So as a result, you're going to have to think a bit more for yourself and work a little bit more autonomously on your own, okay? And we orchestrate that instead of, of showing you all the time, you have to come up with some of your own answers. So that's what we're looking at for the level three, okay? And level three, we don't go to Glanthlin. What you do is you have at least one field trip, which is day trips, okay? As normally as part of your Welsh baccalaureate, We'll do a beach comb or something like that, or we'll go out and do a camp set up, or we'll do a vehicle control point or something like that, relevant to which unit you're doing. So there are opportunities to go out uh, away from the college environment. Like I said, though, uniform and your ID badge is a compulsory item. Um, there may be a small charge. We haven't charged in the last two years, but they may be, depending on what happens with COVID, um, et cetera. Okay, but um, be prepared to um, go to a field trip. OK, so those are the two courses. Now, when we go on to the overall for the whole course, public services equals fitness. OK, get that into your mind now. If you intend to be on the public services, you need to be doing some kind of a fitness regime. You need to do sit ups, press ups, runs, weight carries, heights. OK, you need to be able to do these. Um, don't worry if you haven't done it now, because we'll get you doing it. OK, part of the course is that you'll have a couple of sessions every week where you have to go into the gym, where you have to go get physical. And the idea is that by the end of your two years with us, hopefully the level threes, we expect you to be in the fitness where you would pass the army fitness test. Okay. Now the police is the easiest one to do. And we'll do that first. And when you pass that, we'll say, okay, now we'll make it a bit more difficult, but I'm not going to ask you to pass the Royal Marines fitness test. That's madness. Okay. Basically any of you who have got, um, ideas of being a Royal Marine, you'll be already on your way to doing your fitness. Um, if you want to join the Marines, you need to really apply yourself to getting very fit. Okay, so we're looking at the, passing the Army fitness test by the end of your two years. So what we do is progress it through every week, two, three sessions every week, and that gives you a stepping stone into fitness. We also expect you to um, adopt a healthy lifestyle. So the chocolate, etc. you need to cut back. Sugars, sh cut back, Okay. But you need to show that you are actually working on a healthy lifestyle so that you'll be a productive part of the public services employment regime. That's what we're looking for. We want to get you all out into either higher education or into public service um, employment. That's the whole aim of the course. We don't want you to sit for two years and then walk away saying, well, that was useless. I didn't do anything. OK, so the idea is to keep you employed and to keep you busy thinking about, well, where should I go? And at least by the end of two years time, have an idea of what you want to do. Now, part of that also, we have a lot of visiting speakers. Um, our course has got the most outside speakers coming and you have people from the police, the fire service, ambulance service, Coast Guard, you know, all kinds of people coming in, even from uh, uh, an organization called Bowser, which is basically um, to do with women who have been abused and children and families that have been broken up. We get organizations in just to talk about what they do. OK, a lot of us don't. You hear the words and you don't understand what it is. What do a vow do? 
when they come in and explain, it sort of puts a light in your head and go, well, oh, wow, well, I might want to do that. Okay, um, we have the army come in and they do a fitness day. Well, the Royal Marines come in and the Royal Marines tend to show you how fit you need to be. <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, they are quite, it's quite intense. It's a good day. Okay. Anyway, so um, that's basically what we're talking about. Uh, and overall, the visiting speakers, you're going to have charity activities as well especially the level three um, public, uh, the protective services, you'll be required to run basically as part of your Welsh back and also as part of your course, um, the poppy appeal. Okay. And for those of you who don't know the poppy appeal, I don't know if you've been hiding under stones for years, but it's basically the charity that looks after ex-servicemen. And we'll be running that for a whole week. Um, we've done we've had spectacular results over the last four years. We've had the Lord Lieutenant of uh, North Wales award three times in a row now um, for, win for for charity again okay, working within the community. So that's something that we're proud of and we like to keep it up. But it helps towards you for working in the community and your uh, evidence for silver, bronze, evidence for um, carrying out charities and working in the community, willing to give back. OK. So that's basically what we expect. And um, we also expect you to show signs of wanting to help in the community, to give back in your community. The whole thing is about inclusion, about you um, becoming a public service minded person as opposed to an individual. OK, there's no um, individuality accepted in public services. It's a team effort. Get that into your minds if you intend to do the course. OK, so if there are any questions, OK, Basically, if there's any questions that I can't answer or you haven't, I think I haven't covered in a, a satisfactory, if you look on your um, on the chat side of things, okay, it's studentservices at cambria.ac.uk. Any questions that I haven't answered or covered what you didn't think correctly, you can actually send an email there and they'll um, clarify any position you didn't understand. OK, and um, you, otherwise it's on the website. You'll find some information on the website, like when are we open, when's our holidays, that kind of thing. And that's on www.cambria.ac.uk. OK, and you'll find someone there who can help you, who will either direct you back to me or they'll be able to give you an answer from when's my bus number or what route do I take, that kind of thing, what's EMA, all those kind of questions, okay? Now, looking at the questions, this is me moving into questions phase. Now, hopefully I've covered everything that you need to know for the courses. Um, notice I haven't gone on to the, um, the second year, level threes, because that's your progression. You don't need to know about that at the moment. Um, next year, you'll be told in class before coming back for your, for your extended diploma, okay? But as it stands at the moment, we're only looking at level one and level two, the intros, okay? So any questions of, a, of that, wait till you come to college, ask me and I'll inform you. Right. So I've got a few pre-prepared questions um, which I can go through. The first one is what courses do you do in public services? Well, I've said that already. It's level two and level three qualification in public services. And it's run on both sites. It's run on D side and Cambria and uh, um, Yale. OK, so we've got the two sites which are running. Whether you're in Yale or um, D side, it doesn't really matter. There's one unit difference between the two um, because we've got skilled staff over the other side who are doing legal and we don't do it. So we cover more um, fitness side of things. Apart from that, the two are run um, alongside each other. We keep in touch with each other. Um, you can switch between the two. But like I said, make sure if you're going to Yale, enroll for Yale. If you're coming to D side, enroll for D side. OK, so that's what we're looking at. OK, so that's my uh, first question. OK, and the next one is if I complete a public service call course, will I be able to join a service such as the police? Well, yes, of course you can. The whole idea is that this course is not just the police. It's the Army, Navy, Air Force, Royal Marines, the fire service, everybody else. Basically, what we want to do is to put you into a position where in two years or three years, depending on what your GCSE results are, we want to put you in a position where you're employable. We want to get you over that first interview where you're going to be sitting your backside down in front of some army guy or some Navy guy or some policeman and saying, I want the job. You then have to start coming up with the answers on why do you want it? Because he's going to ask you that. Why do you want it? What first made you think you wanted it? Um, what's your motivation? What's your family history? 
Okay, so those of you are, um, let's say, using, if you're using uh, social media in a strange way, stop doing it. <laughs> okay, because they will look at it. They'll look at your social media ties. They'll look at what you're doing. So you need to think about your future. Okay, every time that you apply for a job, the first place that the recruiters go now is they look at your social media. So think about what you're doing and what you're putting on your social media. You may think it's funny. Policemen won't. Okay. If a policeman will think it's funny, then do it. But if they don't think it's funny, then I wouldn't put it onto any of your social media. I'd, clack, I'd cut all your ties. Okay. But yes, you can get employed by the police, but then you have to go through their standard routine of, you know, how are you going to get on? How are you going to, how are you going to uh, join? And once you've passed through their enrollment process, then, of course, yeah. Uh, bear in mind that uh, the police now also, speaking Welsh is a good advantage, a distinct advantage. If you can't speak Welsh, it might be worth looking at doing one of these little online courses in your own time. And put that down as your own training, learning a new skill for D of E. Okay, but if you can speak Welsh, the police requirement at the moment is that you must be able to speak Welsh at level two, BTEC level two. Okay, it's called uh, Welsh for policing. If you can't uh, converse at that level, then they won't take you now for training. Okay, so an apprenticeship in the police, very lucrative. It's excellent. £22,000 to start or age. You get three days off a week to learn and you get a degree at the end of it. And then uh, almost 100% chance of work because we're looking for 20,000 new policemen in the next four years. So a good opportunity. Okay, and well worth doing this course as a stepping stone into it. OK. Right. Um, let's have a look at another course. I want another question. Will there be exams or is it just an assessment on public service courses? Um, sadly, <laughs> yes, it is an exam now. Um, it's the first year that it's been introduced. Normally, it would be on a January and then a retake possibility in the June. Unfortunately, because this is the first year we're running it. We will not be um, in, entitled to do the exam on, in January, which means that this first year, year that's running through, you won't do your exams until the end of May, early, Jan early June. OK, so we'll only get one shot. It's the first time we've run through it. So you only get one chance at doing it, which means effectively that you must pass. OK, the level twos, you'll have an exam in December, January, sorry, first week in January, and you'll have a retake if you don't succeed. OK, and we think you can do it. You'll have a retake in May. So that's the level twos. But the level threes, you must pass in May, June. OK, the two courses. I'll be doing the one, Gary Abner, and uh, Jason um, Ferguson will be doing the other um, exam prep. And then we've got four other units which we spread amongst the other um, lecturers. OK. So those are exams. Next question. Wearing of uni uniform compulsory on all courses. I've already covered that. Yes, it is. It's compulsory because it puts an element of um, it puts an element of discipline and the idea of discipline into your heads, and basically it helps you into a disciplined environment. Okay, let's have a look at the. We've we got anybody online question here. Okay, we've got one here from Ellie Hughes. Ellie Hughes, can I reset my GCSE English alongside the course? Yes, you can. In fact, Ellie, if you haven't got your A to C grade, you will probably be asked, it depends on your other GCSE results, but what would happen is you would be put into a level two course and you would be timetabled in for GCSE lessons every week. And that, uh, you'll be doing all of the, the old papers, past papers, and then you'll go into um, the exam phase, okay, and you'll do your, your, your resets if required. Now, like I said earlier, if you have um, a GCSE A to C grade, uh, let's say you've got um, five A's, but your English is a D. OK, the chances of me putting you down into a level two course, um, I don't think I do that. I'd, I'd say, well, look at all your other GCSE results. They're B's and A's. And this is just one rogue result. We'll put you in for a GCSE retake, but on the level three course. But the majority of the time, if I don't see that parity and that good performance and all the others, I'll suggest you do a level two course and then progress the following year. OK, right. Another question. Alex, Alex Williams, can we do Welsh courses at the college while studying public services? Yes, you can. Now, um, while studying public services, it's a full time course. So the problem we have there is freeing you up 
into your Welsh courses. But what we can do is we can actually, um, you can request all of your course materials in Welsh and we can get translated course materials and you could work on in Welsh. It gets marked, it gets assessed, etc. in Welsh. Um, otherwise, I'm afraid we have to work in your Welsh courses amongst, depending on your GCSE results, into your free time. So you're basically giving up your free time in the Welsh courses. But, um, and level two, uh, sorry, level three, you will have um, a period of three weeks where you have a concentrated Welsh course and you get the diploma in policing, Welsh in policing. That's part of the course. So, and you're, you, you will actually do that as part of your course. Okay, so there's two ways that you can achieve it. One by getting your, giving up your own time, or the other one is to look in when we do in our Welsh courses and can join in on that and get your level two BTEC in Welsh. Okay, any other questions? Okay, no more questions. Let's see if I'll go through my pre-prepared ones before. What areas of the public services can I go into? I've already said Air Force, police, paramedics, prison service, border force, fire and rescue. The, the list is endless. I'll give you an example. The Royal Navy. Just in the Royal Navy, there are 164 different roles of work that you can partake in. In the police, there's 86 different jobs that you can do, from dog handling, forensics, CID, um, social, uh, social impact, um, all kinds of things, okay? It's not just about walking around the streets with the radio on, okay? No other questions? Okay, and like I said, though, don't forget, if there's anything that you're not sure of now, hopefully I've covered everything for you and you feel reasonably happy about what's going on, I don't expect you to be overjoyed and I don't expect you to be sad, okay? There'll be more information when you join. If you do feel that uh, basically this is a pathway that you could follow then by all means go on get yourself signed on okay and any questions like a reminder okay student services at cambria.ac.uk okay and that's if you want to talk to somebody okay or to to get some kind of specific answers otherwise if you go onto the website which is www.cambria.ac.uk and there'll be some information there and mostly it's general information but go onto the set pages there have a good look Okay, I'm not going to force you to come to public services, but I'd love to see you sitting on one of the chairs when I, when I get back to work. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Dochenvar, have a good day.